I was supposed to be eight or nine weeks, but when I went for the second ultrasound, it turned out that the baby stopped growing at fifth week. Uh, I didn't have any symptom. I just passed out twice. For the past 48 hours, I couldn't take in any fluid, and I was severely dehydrated. So I went to an after-hour clinic. It was weekend. And they checked me. They said everything seems to be fine. And when we went to do the ultrasound, uh, then when we learned that that was a missed miscarriage, and I passed out again in the ultrasound as well. So they sent us to hospital. Um, the complication arised that, you know, they sent us to emergency. But we didn't know at that time that there was a pregnancy center in the hospital. And we were admitted towards the emergency system. And they treated us as their protocols, thinking that, OK, well, yes, you had a miscarriage, and you should, you should wait until the, you know, your body naturally processed that. Um, so it was a bit hard to, I mean, not a bit. It was really hard to explain um, that we were like, it's, it's not the, you know, the miscarriage. And um, I remember Beirut told them that we are not here for free Panadol. <laughs> um, so it, it took us a while. It was, it was a bumpy road to get the right diagnosis. We were so scared thinking that you know, they don't know, nobody knows what's, what's going on with us. Later on with my, with my pregnancy, my daughter, when I had a midwife, um, she told me that actually they should have sent you to the early pregnancy center and they deal with miscarriages and missed miscarriages all the time. Um, and that also, that was something for us because of course we didn't know, but we would expect hospital would know that and I was worried about my future pregnancies what is what if I lose what, what if I cannot have a baby ever again because of all this miscarriage and infection and then all the side effects that could have been avoided and um, I mean at the very last um, when I when I said to uh, one of the staff that um, sorry we didn't really mean to make a fuzz, uh, she turned back to me and said, oh, Middle Eastern women make fuzz. And that's part of in your gene, you can't help it. Um, that made me very scared for my future pregnancies as well. And this is what I told my midwife, that you know I may worry on small things because I don't know what is important and what is not. So if you tell me your concern is not important, this is not something to worry about, I believe you and I take it. But I don't want to be racially profiled. For outsiders, it might be a pregnancy tissue. To me, it was my baby. And it doesn't matter, you know, how early or how far in pregnancy it was. We made its picture. We imagined that baby with us. The baby was already with us. It was three of us already, and we lost that. In my darkest moment of that time, um, I felt that Beruz is the only one in the whole world who can really understand my pain because we are in this together. And he was there for me, but then I could see the impact because as I got better, he got really, really sick. You know, it's a kind of, it's a process of hiding the hidden incident. And while we are hiding what is happening and what we are going through, uh, it's not just a family. Your colleagues don't know either. And culturally, we don't share with our managers or colleagues. So it can make it more difficult for you, either as a mom or as a dad, to take leave and explain what happened and why you're not going to the work. And in a sense, the Society is not quite kind to the father either because they 
expect the mom to grieve and uh, go through all of the whole, whole the process and do the job. So you are the father, you are the man, and you, you're not kind of allowed to grieve. You're not, uh, you don't have any right to spend time with your family. And As if you're not part of it? Yeah. If we are allowed to talk about it, we can also share information. After my loss, um, I was approached by many dear friends, and they said that, you know what? I've gone through the same process. And that, you know, people that I, I could never imagine. And then I thought, oh no, oh wow, all of us, we have been suffering in silence. And maybe our medical system as well, when they are better informed, they are more prepared for people like us when, at least when we go to ER, they know where they should refer us. Honestly, I'm very proud of her because um, she's a strong woman. She's been through a lot of difficulties through her life, and I know about them. And She's always been a supportive wife for me Aww. and a supportive mom for her. She's always been here and I'm, I'm so proud of her and I'm so <laughs> thankful of her. <laughs>